Welcome to Grit City Tales, a podcast hosted by the Humane Society for Tacoma and Pierce County. I'm Mary. And I'm Maggie. And together we're amplifying the untold stories of pets and the people that love them right from the heart of Pierce County, Washington. Thank you all for joining us. Welcome back. So we wanted to start off by saying, you know, happy June. And June is actually Foster Pet Month for those of you that don't know. So we are going to talk a little bit about fostering. We mentioned um, the kitten fosters that were needed and still are needed throughout what we call kitten season. But we're going to focus a little more so today on the need for dog fosters. Um, So if any of you are interested in becoming a dog foster parent, this is the episode for you. This is the one. Um, Right now, uh, for any of you that if you go on our website or just even look at kind of the shelters in the area, kind of their numbers. I feel like we're all seeing a lot of particularly larger dogs having longer stays in the shelter. We have a lot of dogs under our care right now, many of whom are larger dogs. Um, We have about 100, give or take any given day, dogs under the shelter's care. Some are in foster placement right now, but the majority are here in the shelter being cared for. And our kennels are full, as are many other rescues. And when the kennels are full and animals are in the shelter for any length of time, really, um, they experience some stress. It's often not an ideal environment, as nice as we try to make it. And we've talked about that before as well. And that's something that's something we call here at the shelter FAS, which is fear, anxiety and stress, which uh, FAS can be. Uh, diagnosed as a behavioral concern, for sure. Yeah, and so the fear, anxiety, and stress can also result to not only like result in behavioral changes that we see, but also can result in like physical symptoms. Mm -hmm. Um, Animals that are experiencing stress, same within people, if they're overstimulated by all the sights, smells, sounds, they they can be more susceptible to getting sick. So just like us humans, if there's a a cold going around and we're feeling stress, we might be more susceptible to getting it. Well, around here, there is uh, like kennel cough and upper respiratory infections that are kind of kind of ever present, even with the cleaning efforts and um, all that vet staff do and and kennel aids and everybody to make sure that uh, there isn't like cross contamination um, between animals that come in. We're getting animals from all different backgrounds, all different places. They may or may not come having like sniffles or being sick, but while they're here, if they're experiencing stress, they are also more susceptible to potentially getting whatever is kind of lingering like kennel cough or an upper respiratory infection. And so then that that leads to medical treatment being necessary. Um, and if they're not feeling well and they're stressed, there's also mental deterioration that can happen. And it's people and it's routine, everything that's familiar. When they're here, they may have friendly faces that are caring for them and doing what they can to make their stay more enjoyable, but it's definitely not what is kind of ideal for the animals. And so the FAS or just just general kind of depression or any behavioral concerns that they may not, they may not exhibit those behaviors in what would be kind of quote unquote their normal environment, they might express here. And so kind of tying this all in is um, June being Foster Pet Month, there's a way that you all, if you're interested, can help animals that are dealing, whether it be dogs or cats, right now we're gonna focus more so on dogs, but to help kind of mitigate some of this fear, anxiety, uh, the stress, any mental deterioration, um, you can get involved with fostering. Yeah, and who better to share their foster story than our own marketing coordinator, Lauren Green. She has been a foster for us longer than she's worked here. And uh, her, her dog is actually named June for Foster of Pet Month. So welcome, Lauren. Yay, thank you. Yes. Um, yeah, happy to be here. Uh, can you share with us how long you've been a foster and uh, when you, I guess, started fostering June? Ooh, um, okay. Well, I feel like I should tell you like our whole foster journey. And I say our, because I'm talking about me and my husband, Eric, because it is a team effort. Yeah, we'd love to hear (laughs) the whole story. Um, So we, so I've 
worked in the animal welfare field for a handful of years um, and in L.A., um, where we're from, and we moved to Washington uh, early 2020 and mm-hmm. with our, our dog and our cat at the time, um, our cat Luna, who we still have, and Tiny, our absolute soul dog mm-hmm. with every health issue imaginable. Um, <laughs> I think we all know we all have like a soft spot for those type of dogs in this field. Mm-hmm. Um, so we moved from L.A. to Washington with them and Tiny was, like I said, our sole dog. And she she was very much um, a dog with behavior needs. Uh, she was a singleton, a little solo artist. She loved cats, but other dogs was not her jam. Mm. And it worked great in our household. She was just a little superstar, but we knew we couldn't, I couldn't ever foster, you know, when we had her. So or welcome any other animals into the house because mm-hmm. it was just this is our family family and that's you don't upset the balance yeah. yeah don't don't disturb the ecosystem um but yeah so we moved to washington with her and unfortunately shortly after the move she passed um just due to her medical stuff um and we knew like that was the time like this is our opportunity to foster and you know we're new to this area what a great opportunity to like connect with our local shelter but and without committing to like an adoption correct correct because, i mean that was soon after so, yeah passed. it and was so- we gave ourselves a couple months and we were like yeah our house just isn't a home without extra paws <laughs> and hair and yeah. slobber and yeah. all the good things and yeah so and it was a great way for us to kind of like find our community because obviously we love animals and you know just connecting i mean it turns out that the shelter was closest to us and it's one of the largest intake shelters in washington so we knew that we can make an impact yeah. um and we knew that our cat luna she loves dogs so what she would be a great cat to like test you know have like help other dogs like see if they would be good Mm -hmm. in a home with another cat um so yeah we fostered we like short-term fostered um six different dogs um yeah from from here from from here yeah so we we fostered anywhere from like two days to a week few weeks um i want to say our longest was like a month and a half would you say the shorter fosters were harder than the longer fosters oh that's a good question um, you don't really have time to get to know them it, as yeah much. it is definitely a little little more challenging i mean there were ones we could like see right from i mean we weren't just like oh here's our cat you know it was the cat is in her own room and we'll you know that's a slow steady intro if we ended up doing an intro to the cat um for the short-term ones that were just like like two days three days we normally didn't get to like the cat intro um but yeah, that's a yeah, that's actually an interesting now that I think about it. Yeah, the shorter term ones are probably a little bit more challenging just because we couldn't see as much of their personality. Mm-hmm. Um and get in a routine. But then with yeah. the longer term ones, yeah. you really you really start to bond with them. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's it's definitely true what they say. Like it's it's fostering isn't easy. Like it's it's definitely you're going to fall in love. Like that's, I mean, this little being, it. yeah, this little being is in your home. It's part of your day. It becomes part of your daily routine. Um, they come become family to some extent and you just want the best for them. And I think I, you've got to just remind yourself that like, you know, you're, you're setting them up for success. You're Goodbye setting them up. The it is. It absolutely is. But yeah. And then our, um, our seventh foster, Little Miss June, who at the time her name was Kara, mm-hmm. um, because she loved car rides. Because she loved, and she still does. <laughs> I and didn't she know still that. Still does. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> she still very much does. Um, she she was oh, she is a large breed dog with some behavior needs, um, and yeah, we the foster coordinate, coordinator at the time reached out to to me and my husband and said, you know, we've got this dog. She is severely overweight. Uh, I think she weighed like 90 pounds. She's a, a pit bull mix. Uh, she she weighed kind like, of short, like shorter yeah, squatty. She, not, yeah, she's not like a... Shouldn't be 90 pounds. Yeah, no, definitely not. Uh, definitely not. She was close to 90 pounds. Um, she had something torn in her knee, so it was determined she needed TPLO surgery. But she had to lose weight before she but could get she, it, right? <laughs> yeah, she needed to lose at least 30 pounds to before she could get the surgery. What a challenge. 
to ensure a successful recovery because uh, like obviously she couldn't really bear weight on that leg and she definitely wouldn't be able to during recovery so um and we knew that like she had some some challenges with male presenting folks mm-hmm. um so i said okay like if we can i bring my husband with me to meet her you know so we can make sure like she'll be okay with him totally so we came and we both laid eyes on her and we were like oh she, yeah she's coming home with us like yeah <laughs> period like, Done. yeah put her in the car um so yeah we brought her home we you know it was a and they said like you're this is we're hoping you know if it is smooth in your house like we're hoping you'll see this through through her recovery period you know and that's going to take at least a few months so we we knew we were kind of in it for for a cool minute (laughs) but yeah we were happy to accept the challenge uh we got her got her down um down 30 pounds and she received the surgery went beautifully and yeah and then we saw her through her recovery which also went really smoothly and yeah and then like we we just kind of worked with her through her you know behavior needs kind of figuring out how we can best meet those in the home and I don't know. I think when we first laid eyes on her, we kind of knew like this one's going to be our foster fail. <laughs> I, I, I knew the moment you emailed me a, a storybook of, <laughs> about her, about you. Yeah. You, were, you, you said everything. You're like, this is how she eats. This is yeah. when she goes potty. <laughs> yeah, she's, yeah, she she was definitely like meant to find us and we were meant to find her. And yeah, our lucky number seven and June, our, our little foster fail. <laughs> so sweet and she looks so great now with the weight loss and the surgery and what what was your greatest challenge with Hmm. this specific foster because you guys really did go through a lot yeah i mean you know not all fosters are the this um i don't want to call them needy but like she had the weight she, issues, some behavior yeah. issues, the recovery period. The, it was a lot. It wasn't just like another <laughs> roommate. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. But but I think that's kind of like the beauty of fostering. Like we are able to take that. We were able to take that on. And I totally understand that not everyone is in that position. And I think our, our foster team does a really great job of like, hey, you know, you can you know, reach out to them and say like, oh, I've only got a weekend and here's my, you know, I have three roommates or whatever the case may be. Um, and this is how many, how often I can, if it's a dog, how, how often I can like realistically take them out to go potty, like what, wh- who would kind of fit that and they can they do a really great job of pairing like matchmaking yeah totally matchmaking um so yeah we were just kind of in a really great position to be able to help little miss june and yeah i mean it's it's really nice to be able to to have that support from the shelters team that you know once we had questions and we were like oh i don't know about this and especially when it comes to like behavior needs yeah um and and of course like the medical um attention that she needed it was which was provided by our shelter like you you didn't have to pay out of correct. pocket for any of that correct. Okay. no 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 no. that was not was it, none of that one of was the, <laughs> one of the bigger yeah. bonuses of being in addition yeah. to doing doing some good for an animal um also yeah. not having the expenses of that animal totally right. it's and great. it's it's the expenses it's the you don't have to necessarily commit but you are setting them up for, up for success like i just think about if she didn't end up with us like what I would be able to share with the shelter about her Mm -hmm. to help her find her perfect home, even though it's with me, uh, (laughs) um, is something that we wouldn't have been able to do if she was sitting at the shelter, you know? And I think about even her, the, you know, weight loss journey, plus the recovery from the surgery. um, That's if she were to stay in the shelter and go through all of that, that's, months in a kennel as an open admission shelter that kennel space is crucial crucial um so to be able to take that weight off of the shelter for the amount of time we did um it you know it makes it makes fostering worth it yeah you're saying fosters are superheroes they really are (laughs) (laughs) they really are i mean even for you know um a dog that doesn't have any, you know, behavior needs or Mm -hmm. medical needs, like time outside of a kennel is, is key. And I can't tell you like in the marketing department, how 
how valuable fosters content about, for you know, lack of a better word, the content they provide us about the animals that they're caring for, how much that helps us market them for adoption and helps our adoption counselors best, you know, set them up for success in an ad- adoptive home. Mm-hmm. Even a picture, a good picture of a dog in a foster home or outside or just a good quality photo could change the outcome for a pet. Yeah, because somebody could see it and just feel that connection. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, I feel like, do that. They they see one and that's that's what sparks. They see that picture and that brings them to come in to even, you know, potentially do a meet and greet. And that an might animal. not be the pet that they end up with, yeah. but, but they it got them to the shelter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 100%. 100% great photos are worth their weight in gold. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing about uh, June and how you went through that whole process. Yeah. And how long was it before you adopted? That's what I was interested in, oh. like from foster to adoption. Um, let's see. So we started fostering in July of 2022. That's when we picked up June. And then we made it official <laughs> end of May almost a year yeah 2023 yeah um, just shy of a a year yeah and she so she's coming up on her adoption day but. so a lot of fosters are not this long term <laughs> no, yeah. no, no 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 like, <laughs> like lauren said earlier summer a week a weekend uh, a couple of days any time out of the shelter is valuable for that pet and uh I talked to our foster lead, Natalie Huffman, who was a guest on our second podcast for kitten season. And, you know, she let us know that the greatest need right now is large dogs with behavioral needs, uh, especially, but just large dogs in general. And by behavioral needs, it might be like, you know, just maybe not having another dog in the home or maybe not being around cats or maybe not being around kids or more so like needing structure and work on basic obedience. Like the, the range of behavior is, is varied. So it's also, you know, if you're worried about like taking on a behavior case, so, so to speak, quote unquote, like they, they're there to support you and they would match you with what kind of your comfort level is. Right. And if it doesn't work out, you know, there's other opportunities for fostering. Lauren, would you share with us what you would say is an ideal home for a foster dog? Because at, with kittens, you can put them in a, you can contain them, you can put them in a kennel, you can put them in a bathroom, but what about a dog mm. that will likely own the house? <laughs> <laughs> likely own the house. Um, yeah, I for me, I think most people tend to think like, oh, I can't have a dog because I don't have a yard. And I think there couldn't be anything further further from the truth than that. Um, they don't I, have a yard here in their kennels. Ex- they get exactly, walked by volunteers, exactly. but they don't have access 24-7 to a yard. Exactly. So I think, you know, a lot of folks um, that, you know, live in apartments or condos tend to think like, oh, I, I we don't have access to a yard 24-7, so we can't have a dog. When we had Tiny, our our dog in Los Angeles, we we lived in an apartment and we just got very used to our walking routine. <laughs> get some exercise. In. You do get your steps in. Um, yeah, and it, it honestly, I found it really helpful, especially for a dog that has, you know, some some behavior needs um, to, to get that routine in place. Um, and it really helps structure um, structure them in the, in the home environment. It helps give, give me structure as well, which <laughs> yeah, we all need that. helps me as well. So yeah, I wouldn't, you know, limit yourself. And again, like there's, yeah, I mean, sure. There might be some dogs that would, would thrive with, you know, more access to the outdoors. And that's something that our team can, is happy to like help with. Um, yeah, so don't let it deter you. No, basically, absolutely not. Like, there shouldn't be anything to, to deter you from welcoming a little, little animal into your to your life. Just just yeah. temporarily. Give it it's a just, try. Yeah. And if, like Mary, you were saying earlier, if it doesn't work out, if you get the pet home and it's just like, this doesn't seem like the right fit. Okay, we tried it. And now, now we know more information, too, about that pet just in that short amount of time, right? Absolutely. Like, oh, he didn't really thrive there. Let's, okay, now we know. Well, we have, like... We have dog walkers, we have um, enrichment volunteers, we have our kennel aides, we have the foster leads, and each each of those groups, they do provide interaction and they do get to know the animals. Um, so it's not like we don't get 
kind of any, uh, they don't get any exposure to people and we don't get any insights on them. But those, you know, 10 minute chunks with each, each different person every day is not the same as being with, you know, a, a person or a family, uh, whatever insights that longer term in a, in a home environment can provide. Yeah. It's that individualized, you know, round the clock care that, I mean, yes, they're getting the care that they need at the shelter, but to have eyes on one animal 24 seven. And th those animals with varying backgrounds, it's depending on how they got here, they truly do bond with fosters quickly. They do. And yesterday I was seeing a volunteer who had a dog only for 24 hours and she was howling when she walked oh. away. Um, it was like, it was like Mom, where are you going? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like their safe, their safe place. And I, I just think it's so wonderful. And I've only fostered one dog in my time, and uh, it was it was a really really awesome experience for me. Wow. So you talk. So well, Lauren, you talked about you know your your kind of setup um, with the the yard thing. So like um, Mary. Mary said that she's fostered. She's uh, fostered a dog a while back. Um, I've fostered a few dogs. Lauren, you fostered prior to June. Um, and you might have some other questions about fostering. Um, those of you listening, like, what if I'm not home during the day? Well, all of us were here at work at the shelter during the day and our animals are at home. Any fosters are. Sometimes we're able to bring them into the office, but this this is kind of a normal that that would be a normal uh, experience for them if they went into another home as well if they were adopted by a family who had kind of a traditional work schedule so and it's largely dependent on the dog you yeah. know if you have a small shih tzu who's blind like you usually take home maggie <laughs> i take the old crusties usually <laughs> the small old crusties they're all so adorable Usually they can stay in a kennel or a, a large kennel with yeah. water and food. Um, like mine stay in the kitchen or a playpen. Play yeah. Um, and is it ideal? Like, do I like being gone even from my own dogs eight hours a day? No, but to provide them the life with, to which they've become accustomed, I must. You, <laughs> you must know, fund it. I must fund <laughs> their needs. And so that means that sometimes you have to, to do, do a little bit of the, the work to then be able to come back and provide them. Animals just want to spend time with you. You know, it's, I don't have enough time. Well, uh, some time is better than shelter time. Which is true. Like if you can only foster for a couple of days, Lauren's story was, I wouldn't say uncommon, but it's not necessarily the average, the yeah. average foster story that we see around here. We definitely have medical fosters that take a while, um, behavioral concerned um, or behavioral concerns with some of our dogs that they might be in our system for a while with maybe multiple foster homes before they find kind of the right the right family to adopt them. But even if you can only foster for a couple of days, um, even that helps. Yeah, I think June being called Foster a Pet Month um, is really great timing given that schools are out typically around this time for summer break. And I cannot think of a better family activity than Fostering. I cannot wait to foster with my baby. I think this is going to be so much fun uh, when he's older. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's a great opportunity. And you don't have to leave the house. Like, win, win, win. Win, win, win. Um, yeah, I think, it, yeah, it's a great time to, to reach out to your local shelter and welcome a pet into your home temporarily. Um, Natalie did share with us that we have 35 dogs in foster right now. Uh, five puppies. That's a whole new adventure. Uh, but in the month of April, 100 dogs in and out of foster. So that's 100 dogs that we got more information on and that got, got that little bit more enrichment and a home safe environment. So Maggie, how would we look into fostering? If, if you listen to this and you're interested, how would we go into fostering? Well, we mentioned this uh, during our kitten shower episode because the same process is uh, how you start. The, uh, whether you're fostering a dog or a cat or, or a rabbit, you would go on our website, which is thehumanesociety.org. And up at the top, you'll see a Get Involved tab. And under Get Involved, there's like careers, volunteer, and foster. So you would click on the foster option. That would take you through the um, kind of the different the, the application that they have. They would review it and you'd kind of be put on a list, basically, of people that they can send out messages to like, hey, this 
this dog, this cat, this rabbit came in and needs foster placement, anyone available to take them for X amount of time, whatever it might be. So you'd be put kind of in that foster loop and, um, you know, be able to respond as, as you're able. There's definitely not a pressure of, oh no, we haven't, they haven't responded for, you know, three times. We, we are going to kick them out of foster. That's not the case at all. Um, and like Natalie said, they, they choose based on who responds first. It's a great system. Yeah, <laughs> it works. <laughs> yeah. So don't feel uh, like threatened also by the, like, if it's daunting, if you see all the asks and feel like you need to take all of them. No, that's what we have a foster network for. So we, we do have a pretty good foster network of families, but we can always use more, especially for these larger dogs and or behavioral concern dogs that could really benefit from being out of the shelter environment. Thank you so much for joining us, Lauren. We are so grateful for the story you shared with us and for being a foster extraordinaire. Oh, thank you. And we're going to go into our last segment here is how we made happy happen this week. Maggie, can you share with us? Well, uh, we have our vaccine clinics once a month. It's usually the fourth Saturday of every month here at the shelter. We uh, have a grant from Petco Love where we're able to give some free dog and cat vaccines out as well as other reduced cost vaccines such as rabies, offer dewormer, microchipping, that sort of wonderful thing to keep our pets healthy. And our last vaccine clinic was on May 25th and we served 139 pets. So that means Woo. dogs and cats galore got some, some basic vaccines to help keep them safe and happy and healthy. Some microchips were given, some dewormer was given. Um, the pet support and uh, vet team do a wonderful job hosting these here in our parking lot. And our next one is actually going to be June 22nd for those of you that maybe need vaccines and didn't know about this. Swing on by, um, it's 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's a walk-in, so you don't need an appointment, but um, this last clinic, we were able to help a lot of pets and we hope to continue to do that with every clinic that comes moving forward. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to support the podcast, please subscribe, share with others, and leave a rating and review. If you got any questions that you want us to submit on a future episode, go to our website at thehumanesociety.org slash podcast and submit your questions. To catch all the latest from the Humane Society for Tacoma and Pierce County, check us out on Instagram and Facebook at Tacoma Humane. See you next, See you time. next time.